Another feature that we've got in Pro Tools 10 that a lot of people are very happy about is real-time fades. Now, in the past, fades have always been little audio files, and everybody's aware of them because you open up a session, and if you've moved the session around a lot, you find that it'll sometimes say that the fade files are corrupt, or it cannot find them and has to recreate them. It's a lot of files, and it does take up a lot of room if you've got a very, very large session. With real-time fades, it's all a part of the metadata of the session. Therefore, there are no more little audio fade files, which we're very, very happy about. However, there are some more upsides to it, especially if you use a lot of audio suite plugins, because in the past, if you put an audio suite process over a piece of audio with a fade file in it, then it would delete that fade file and it would become a consolidated part of that audio file, which then gives you no chance to actually go back and really mess with it again or tweak either side of it. So if you open up a audio suite plugin for this example, we're not really doing any sound processing here, so let me just open up, ooh, where's impact? I like impact. Uh, and we've done some changes to this as well. If I go clip by clip and create an individual file and then press render, you'll see that it's actually rendered the file, but the fade file is still there. That's really cool, because it means that you can actually go in and tweak that if you need to. Now. When I say tweak, what does Michael mean? I'll tell you what I mean. If you look at the bottom of this Audio Suite plugin, you'll see that we've added an extra uh, little section here. It'll say whole file, and then next to it, it says two seconds. In Audio Suite preferences now, we've given you what we call Audio Suite handles, which means that by default, Every single time you do an audio suite process, we automatically process two seconds on either side of your selection, which means that if you get to the final part of the edit and you decide, you know what, that wasn't quite close enough, I need to go back and get that breath or I need to add an extra bit, you've got that freedom to do that. And that's very, very cool because it means that you don't have to go back a million steps to actually work out the way you wanna do it. So now I can actually go in and I can actually select, okay, so where do I want that to be? And I can pull it out and it'll actually keep that processing there, which again is very, very cool. We're very excited about that. Now, if you wanted to change the way that you do that, or if you wanted to change the way you actually have your handles or ha uh, the actual length of the handle, you can do that as well. If you go into processing, you'll see under the processing preferences, you've got default handle length and you've got whole file which is what it used to be, or you've got length. Now, we default at two. However, there's nothing stopping you saying, you know what, I'd like five seconds on either side. So hit five, and now you've got five seconds of handles on either side of any audio pro suite process you do. So that means, again, we're helping the creative flow, which really, really helps the way you move, and obviously is gonna save you a lot of time. Now, what are we gonna talk about next? Let's talk about a couple of other little things in Pro Tools 10 that make life a lot easier. In front of me, I have a D command. Now, this is one of our flagship consoles. We're very proud of it. We love the way they work, and they do make things a lot easier. There are a couple of functions on here that have only been in the hardware until now that we've now added into Pro Tools software, all versions. If I have a uh, track soloed, now, if you look at the top of the screen, in your transport area, you'll see that there's a little highlighted S on your Pro Tools screen. That means that there is something in your session that is soloed. Now, if you click that, it'll automatically clear all solos in the session. And if you've got a session that's got 150 plus tracks, it means that you don't have to scroll through everything to work out where it is. Now, the upside of that is, and everybody has done this, even if you deny it, you press play, you've got a client behind you, and no sound comes out because you've forgotten to unsolo something. And rather than feeling a bit like a, an idiot, you can just clear solo up there. You'll notice right next to it as well, there's a little highlighted M. That means that there are some tracks in this session that are muted. However, clicking it does not clear mutes. We do not do that for the sole reason that clearing all mutes um, means that you could potentially have more feedback depending on what you've got muted. So we're just letting you know that there are mutes there. We don't see a reason to actually help mute them.